So now we're going to talk about B cells and antibodies. This is our immune system part two video. Just as a quick refresher, our immune system, we have three lines of defense. The first line is our barriers from the external world, uh, our skin and mucous membranes. Our second line of defense is our natural killer cells, our anti-inflammatory or antimicrobial proteins and our inflammatory response. Those two things are both non-specific. The first and the second line are both non-specific. They're gonna help defend against everything. Today we're talking about a portion, our B cells portion of our third line of defense, and that is specific. So we have a specific B cells with specific things to fight for a specific pathogen. So it's specific, it's made up of, our third line of defense is made up of a few different things. We're gonna talk about B cells, but there's also T cells and antibodies. It responds to antigens. So when we our body sees an antigen, this is the response we're gonna make for a specific antigen. Because antigens are specific for pathogens, specific for different toxins, and specific for abnormal body cells. We don't recognize them. They're all specific. And what I'm talking about in specific, what I'm talking about is shape, Again, that's how most of our body works in terms of how we can see everything and determine everything and determine self from non-self. Antigens are proteins on the pathogen. And they serve as cellular name tags for these pathogens. So don't get it twisted though. They're proteins on the pathogens. Antigens are proteins on the pathogen. These foreign antigens can come from any pathogen, okay? Virus, bacteria, protozoa, parasitic worms, fungi, toxins, any pathogen at all. But the thing it is, is it serves as a cellular name tag. And it's nothing more than some specialized structure, whatever that structure looks like, that and I don't want to color all this in, um, but it's some structure that has a specific shape that basically lets the body know and the immune system, hey, I'm not a part of your body. You need to deal with me or I'm going to have a tasty, use you as a tasty treat, replicate and move on. So our body says, hey, this is a pathogen this isn't one of us and take steps to get rid of the pathogen b cells and t cells are both involved in this process but the thing about it is that they both do different jobs and they respond to the antigens differently our b cells are going to attack the pathogen itself and get rid of what's causing the harm the t cells are going to attack and deal with the cells that have been infected by the pathogens. Because unfortunately, as these pathogens get into our body, some of them are going to infect our cells. So if that is the case, we need to get rid of those infected cells, T cells do it. B cells take care of the pathogen, T cells take care of the infected cells. So, Lymphocytes is a fancy term for our B cells and T cells. Now, lymph, because they develop in the lymphatic system, and cytes is an ending meaning cell. So these are cells that mature in the lymphatic system, okay, or different parts of the lymphatic system. Now, Let's talk about B cells. B cells are called B cells because they mature, or sorry, are made in the bone marrow. B cells, bone marrow. This is also known as the humoral response. Humors, body fluids, there's a connection. And, but the big thing here though is they're made in the, in the bone marrow and they produce antibodies that we're gonna talk more about later. Our T cells, they mature in the thymus. That's why it's T, T thymus. And that's part of the cellular response. 
All of these learn to distinguish self from non-self from the antigens that from the pathogen. Okay, so B cells are humoral response. It happens in the fluid, in the lymphatic vessels, and in our blood. It's a specific response for specific antigens. We make specific antibodies for specific antigens. So let's say that we have an antigen that looks like that. Okay, we are. There's going to be a specific antibody. And antibodies are kind of uh, Y-shaped, okay? So we're, there's going to be a specific notch out of here and a notch out of here that's gonna be able to take and clamp that antigen. It's gonna bind nice and neat. So again, pardon my, I didn't major in art, I majored in biology, <laughs> but uh, this, antigen in black is going to fit perfectly in that little notch on the antibody. So there's specific antibodies for specific antigens. So you could use this same antibody in green for, let's say, this antigen, right? It has a different shape than this black antigen, so it would need a different antibody. There's two different types of B cells. There's plasma B cells, okay? They're short term, okay? Short term, they attack right now. They kind of get in, get out, and then they're recycled. They're broken down. It's for an immediate response. And then memory B cells, they are long term. When we get vaccinations, we're making memory B cells so we don't have to uh, we, we already have some of those antibodies made to recognize the antigens. So antibodies, again, like we mentioned before, they're proteins that bind to a specific antigen. Each one, each one is specific and it acts like handcuffs. So as we see, as a, and as a, we saw in the last slide, we have an antigen and an antibody. The antibody basically covers the antigen and acts as that handcuff. The antigen can no longer infect any other cells with an antibody around it. So here's how they work. See how here we have everything nice and matched up. Okay, we have everything here nice and matched up around the antigens. All these antigens, so the antibody is the Y-shaped thing. Okay, the antigen is this pointy thing sticking out. And as we see, the antibodies bind to the antigens. When the antibodies bind to the antigens, the antigens can't get into anything else in any way, shape, or form. So the antibodies completely surround the antigens, and then they become useless. They're handcuffs. Then we have this thing, this cell called a macrophage that will come over and see all these antibodies surrounding this thing. And they're gonna come in and they're gonna engulf that whole pathogen, all the antibodies, all that stuff. They're gonna engulf it all. That engulfing is a process called endocytosis, okay? endo in cytosis. We're going to bring that whole thing into the macrophage. The macrophage is then going to chop everything up into individual parts and reuse it. Done. Okay, so that's, that's how the antibodies work. They're released to surround the antigens, then the macrophage comes over, takes the pathogen with the antibodies attached to it, and chops everything up to reuse later. A perfect world, something that we have already been exposed to, we've been vaccinated against, we already have these memory B cells. We know that they're memory B cells because these antibodies are on the outside. So if antibodies are on the outside, they're memory B cells. So what happens is, is these memory B cells, they recognize that specific antigen because we already have these specific antibodies for that specific antigen. So what happens is we go and make 
thousands of these different clone cells. And we're get, so we make some more memory B cells, but also as we do what we're making from these clones, we're making plasma B cells. We know that these are plasma B cells because the antibodies are here on the inside of the cell. So plasma B cells, plasma B cells, have antibodies on the inside. And what these plasma B cells do is they go circulate through our lymph and our blood and they go out and they take care and they'll release the antibodies to go bind to the antigens. Once they bind to the antigens, here this big old macrophage comes over, is gonna swallow this whole thing and chop it up into individual parts. And we still have the memory B cells left over and long term in case we come across this same guy again. So the first time or the primary time that we have this, the first time, okay? So here's, we're gonna have a few of those antibodies the first time. We're gonna have a few of those and after 28 days, it's gonna be completely gone, okay? Let's say after 28 days, we get it we get exposed to that same thing we got sick from again. Well, we've already had that pathogen in our body again. So now, remember, if we go back here. Whoops, too far. We go back here. We already had that antibody in the system. We already had that memory B cell. So we are able to make thousands of these clones right away, right now, really, really, really quick. That's why the amount of antibodies skyrocketed the second time we are exposed to that same pathogen. You know, and it doesn't mean that it's for every single pathogen, just this pathogen. Because at the same time, we're exposed to a different pathogen, and it's just like the first curve, okay? The first time we were exposed to this, it wasn't that fast of a response, it was gradual. The second time, whoa, really quick response right now. Here, again, this is the first time that we've seen this specific one. It's not going to be quick. It's going to be nice and gradual and slow. Because the second time that we are exposed to the same pathogen, we already have those memory B cells in our body. We have, which means we can make the plasma B cells much, much quicker, attack the pathogen really quick and a lot of times we never get sick because our immune system already attacked all the pathogen and got rid of it. Which is exactly how our vaccinations work. We expose ourselves to an antigen. We expose ourselves to an antigen so what we're making is the memory, memory, B cells. Okay, we're making the memory B cells already, so we have those B cells with the antigen or antibodies on the outside of them already. We've already exposed ourselves to the just the antigen, not the whole pathogen, just the antigen, so we can make these antibodies. Our memory B cells stay around for a really, really, really long time. So then, again, that same graph that we just looked at, if we're exposed to it, we're not dealing with this part of the curve. No, we already have the antibodies. So it's like we've already been exposed to it. So this is our secondary exposure to it. So they happen and can be made and attack the, the virus or the bacteria or whatever pathogen it is. We can attack the pathogen much, much quicker because we already made the memory B cells. So our vaccinations, expose ourselves to an antigen of the pathogen to make memory B cells so we can already have a secondary response if we come across that pathogen again. And just because we're talking about antibodies, we need to talk about blood type. This is definitely a, a veer off course, if you will, but it's kind of close. Blood type A makes anti-B antibodies, okay? So we make protein A and anti-B. We can only donate to A. If we have B blood type, that means we make B proteins and anti-A antibodies. So if you had, here's your blood cell, and you got A proteins, okay? And you make B antibodies, 
Okay, so if you come and cross another, here, let me make that a different color. If you come across a cell that has a B protein on it, well, then this guy is going to go bind to that and cause a clog or a clot. Okay, so this is where it gets fun stuff. If we have type AB blood, type AB blood, that means our red blood cells have A proteins and B proteins, okay? They don't make any antibodies in any way, shape, or form. So they don't have any of these antibodies, and we're just talking about blood type antibodies. They still have an immune system and can make antibodies in their immune system. Just talking about for blood type. Type AB, they don't make any blood type antibodies, so they can get blood from anything because they don't have any antibodies to cause this clot that we did over here. And then there's type O. Where type O, they, have, they don't have any antigens. It's just a normal old red blood cell. There's none of those proteins around on the outside like these guys did. But they do make anti-A and anti-B antibodies. They are the universal donor. And they're not the universal donor because let's go back to this example, right? Well, hold on, Flanagan. Type O makes these antibodies, A and B. So if you give this blood to that person, well, I thought that person made this antibody. And this guy, sorry, and this right here would clot with this. Eh, not so fast. The thing about it is, is this antibody right here only works for this person. So let's call this, uh, this, let's say this is Pete and this is Paul, okay? If Pete gives blood to Paul, that's fine. Paul is not going to have anything because there's no antibody, or sorry, there's no proteins on this. So Paul says, thank you very much for the blood. And Pete's antibody is not going to bind here because these antibodies only work for Pete. That's why whenever you see a hospital show, they rush into the emergency room and the doctor always says, hang bags of O blood because they are the universal donor. So that was the big picture of the specific immune system, primarily talking about how B cells work and a quick explanation of blood type proteins and antibodies. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill till the next episode.